A new book says President Biden was furious over his administration's attempts to get a grip on the border crisis as illegal immigrants continue to flow into the U.S. Quote, aides had rarely seen him so angry from all over the West Wing. You could hear the president cursing, dropping F-bombs. In parentheses, he'd always apologize when women were present. Joe Concha, author of Come On Man, is joining us now. So uh, I guess he does know what's going on at the border. I guess we've confirmed that with this new book. Joe, what do you think? Well, Ashley, as I talk about my book, there was once a time when Joe Biden bragged about supporting border security. Here's what he said as a senator in 2006, quote, unlike most Democrats, I voted for 700 miles of fence. But let me tell you, we could build a fence 40 stories high. But unless you change the dynamic in Mexico and punish American employers who knowingly violate the law when they hire illegals, unless you don't do those two things, all the rest is window dressing, unquote. Joe Biden actually said that, and he was well into his 60s when he said it. So I find it fascinating that this book says he's been so upset about the state of the U.S. southern border, which is a full-blown crisis, as you know, Griff, from your reporting down there. But, but, but if he's so upset, as commander-in-chief, why not go there to assess the situation? Why not, in that $1.7 trillion spending bill, allocate the kind of money needed to enhance border security the way the 2006 version of Joe Biden bragged about? Oh, right, his handlers won't allow it, Griff. Yeah, that's such a great point, Joe. And literally, to be a Washington nerd here for a second. On page 753 of the omnibus <laughs> bill, there is $1.9 billion, with a B, allocated for border uh, management uh, uh, enhancement, but not uh, enforcement yeah. of any kind, which means that's $2 billion to simply process faster and transport migrants around the country. Nothing to build the right. wall. Nothing to add manpower to put boots on the ground on the border. And again, that's $2 billion, which sounds like a lot until you compare it to the fact that it's in a bill that's $1.7 trillion. It's a fraction of a fraction. I mean, the bottom line is that this is a president who doesn't make orders. He takes orders. And, and in this case, he should be saying, OK, we have to do something about this because of all this fentanyl that's coming over, killing 300 Americans a day. And the fact that millions of people are crossing into this country, it's overwhelming our health care system. It's overwhelming our education system. And nobody seems to give a damn. And that's a whole ball of wrong, Ashley. Yes, it is. Uh, don't forget about the $410 million that's allocated to border security in other countries. Um, but we'll get to that topic maybe <laughs> right. a different Great day. Uh, so Nancy Pelosi gushed over the media during her last formal press conference as Speaker of the House. Listen to this. This is my final weekly press conference, and some of you have been covering Congress for a long time. Others are new. Uh, all of you are guardians of democracy. You've heard me say again and again, if there were one freedom in the First Amendment, the freedom of, uh, of the press, that would be the one that protects and defends all the other freedoms. So I guess, does she consider the journalist she snapped at recently saying, don't bother me, a uh, guardian of democracy? Yeah, I mean, oh, please. I mean, th this is the House Speaker, as you say, repeatedly has snapped at reporters when the rare time came she was asked a remotely difficult question, guys. Uh, but overall, it's not surprising that Nancy Pelosi has such great affection for the press. I mean, CNN literally took her out to lunch last week for a PR session under the guise of an interview. And by the way, when was the last time you heard any member of the media ask her about the state of the city of San Francisco that she represents? Crime is so bad there, they fired the DA when the bluest cities in the country. Uh, overall, Nancy Pelosi leaves with a, th what, what, what am I looking at here, 34 percent approval rating on average, but she probably has a 94 percent approval rating from those in the press who think she's the queen. And she's not even leaving, by the way. She's going to remain in Congress, just won't be the speaker. I got to get to another speaker, right. topic with you, and that is disgraced former crypto boss Sam Bankman Freed was just released on a $250 million bond. He's going to be spending the holidays at his parents' multi-million dollar home in California. Your thoughts, Joe? Uh, how's that foot massage of a New York Times interview that they gave <laughs> Sam Bankman free just a few weeks ago? How's that looking that right now, right? Uh, and that was after he, it was revealed he stole billions of dollars from his investors, by the way. He shouldn't be out on any bond. He, he's now going to be living in a, in, in a life of luxury out in California. He should be in a jail cell. I mean, this is Bernie Madoff 
times 100. And the fact that he's out and is a flight risk, let's face it, uh, because I'm sure there's some money stashed away somewhere. Uh, it, it's a poor decision. I, I think most people would agree with that, guys. Yeah, and I don't, I, I just don't think he's a very likable person by anyone, whether <laughs> you were screwed over by him or not. Joe Concha, thanks so much. Take Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys. Take care. <laughs> See ho, you ho, ho, ho. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.